Hello and welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We come today to Matthew chapter 15, verse 21, going through the book of Matthew, verse by verse. Been teaching the Bible verse by verse now, here on Scripture Verse by Verse for 34 years, going from Genesis to Revelation and then starting all over again. So there are four series going through the Bible at thebibleversebyverse.com. They're all archived there for you at thebibleversebyverse.com. So you can go there and choose the series, choose the book of the Bible, choose the chapter, click and listen, bring your Bible and a hunger for God's Word to thebibleversebyverse.com and get ready for the Word of God taught straight. I don't water down the Word, never have, never will. That's at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Matthew fifteen twenty one. Then Jesus went from there and departed into the borders of Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon were just north of the nation Israel. As far as we know, this is the only time that Jesus ever left Israel, at least as an adult. 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same borders and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a demon. This woman, although she lived close to Israel and no doubt heard about the Israelite God, the one true God, she had not been a worshiper of God. And because of that, she had no claim on God. She didn't know God. She didn't care about God. She didn't worship the one true God. So she had no claim on God whatsoever. The people of the world have no claim on God. The people of the world have no claim on Jesus. They're not his children. They're not his brothers and sisters. Only those who repent and receive Christ as Lord and Savior and worship the one true God belong to God. He is their father, not just their creator. Well, again, this woman had not been a worshiper of God. So she had no claim on God. She didn't know God. She didn't worship God. She didn't serve God. Keep that in mind. Verse 23. But Jesus answered her not a word. He just ignored her. She had a demon-possessed daughter. She came to Jesus for help, and Jesus ignored her. That's uh, not something you see an awful lot. In fact, this is the only time that I know of in Scripture where Jesus ignored anybody. But look it. He answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Jesus didn't answer her a word. He just kind of ignored her, seemingly. And, of course, the disciples are all in favor of this because she didn't serve the one true God. She was a heathen. So get rid of her, Jesus. We don't want to mess with that. And notice in verse 23, but he answered her not a word. You see, in verse 22, in verse 22, she said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, which is a reference to the Messiah. Jesus didn't acknowledge her. This woman called Jesus the son of David, which was another name for the Messiah, the Christ. She is acting, she's talking, as if she's one of God's chosen people. But she is not. She's trying to pull the fast one on Jesus. Of course, you can't do that. But she is. She's talking like she is one of God's chosen people. Oh, Messiah. Like she cares. She's not, a, she's not a child of God. She's not a member of God's people. She could have been. But up to this point, she obviously had not wanted that. And that's why Jesus ignored her here. He didn't respond to her. This illustrates the fact that God does not promise to answer the prayer of those who do not serve him. 23. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came And besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. See, to Jesus, this woman was a lost soul who maybe is starting to come around a little bit. He's not going to send her away 
because a person like this needs to be handled with patience. So for verse 24, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what he told this woman, proving that she wasn't fooling him with her pious language. She knew the language of the saved, but she was a heathen. And Jesus said, I haven't come to help people like you. I've come to help God's people. God's purpose was to bless his people, not those who reject him. And it's the same today, too, by the way. But in spite, in spite of what false teachers say today, God doesn't see all people the same way. Oh, we're, you know, like I've heard so-called Christian preachers on national television say, oh, we're all children of God. It doesn't matter. You fool, you blasphemous liar. We are not all children of God, and it does matter. It sure matter to Jesus. He didn't come to help people like this. He came to help God's people. There's a difference. Not all people are God's people. God's attitude toward those who belong to him through Jesus Christ, as opposed to those who do not belong to him, is very different. So, he's pointing that out to this woman. 25. Then came she... And worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. She has not been what she should have been. But to her credit, she is now calling out to God with humility. She's, she's expressing humility toward Jesus. He will respond to this. He didn't respond to her feigned piety in the previous verse, but he will respond to her humility. 26, but he answered and said, it is not right to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. As one who hasn't yet repented and made a commitment to Christ, she had no right to claim any of the promises of God or the blessings that would come from the Messiah. God promises to take care of us if we are his servants through Jesus Christ. However, God has not promised to care for those who do not consider him to be their Lord. That's why Jesus said it's not right to take what belongs to children and give it to dogs. You don't think that Jesus makes a distinction between those who have repented and received him as Lord and Savior and submit to him and live for him and trust in his finished work on the cross and those who have not? Those who have are his children. Those who have are the people of God. Those who have not, as far as God is concerned, are dogs. Jesus called this woman a dog. Jesus was a tough preacher. There is no way in this world that Jesus would ever be allowed to preach in modern evangelical churches today. No way. If he showed up, he'd preach his one message. And if he went over 15 minutes, well, whatever. He'd never be invited back. Once they heard what he had to say, he'd never be invited back. 27. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She says, you know what, Lord, you're right. I shouldn't try to talk like I'm one of God's people when I'm not. You saw right through me. I'm not worthy. No beating around the bush. No pretending. I give it to you straight. I'm not worthy. And I'm just a dog. You're right. But I've noticed that sometimes the family dog gets some table scraps. So do you have a table scrap for me? 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made well from that very hour. She wasn't worthy of God's help. So she asked, for God's mercy. Jesus gave her what she wanted 
even though she wasn't one of God's people. Sometimes God answers the prayers of the unsaved to show them that he is real and that they should become one of his people. She persevered with God. She wouldn't let up. She persevered in prayer, as it were. And for that, her faith is said to be great faith. Verse 29, And Jesus departed from there, and came near unto the Sea of Galilee, and went up into a mountain, and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and put them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Jesus could have saved time by saying, I'm going to count to three, and then I'm going to snap my divine fingers, and when I do, every single one of you will all be healed of whatever problem you have at the exact same second. He could have done it that way. He could have saved a lot of time. But you know, always remember this. The quick way is not always God's way. The easy way, the convenient way, is not always God's way. Most of the time, God lets us labor and persevere. If for no other reason, that builds patience and character. If God always gave us what we wanted right away, many of his children would remain spiritually immature. 31. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak and the maimed to be well, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus came to reveal God. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. He is the exact image of God, the book of Colossians says. He came to reveal God, and he's doing that right here with all of these miracles. The people gave God credit for the miracles that Jesus did. Remember, it was just a little while ago, the Pharisees and religious rulers who hate Jesus and were jealous of him said that he did all of his works to cast out demons and such by the works of the devil, by the power of the devil. Well, the people weren't that stupid. They didn't have an ax to grind. They took an objective look at Jesus and they realized this is God. And they gave God credit for all the things that Jesus did. They gave God credit. They praised God. It's good to thank people who help us, but we must also thank God because of all the blessings that we receive, no matter what the human source might be. They all originate with him. 32, then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now these are three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. Notice how Jesus is so concerned about people and their basic needs. And Jesus presents a problem here. These people are starving. They're a long ways from home. And he knows how he's going to solve this problem. But he still presents it to his disciples. How are they going to respond? How they respond will reveal what they have learned about Jesus up to this point. And we'll have to wait and see how they respond next time. For now, I'm out of time, but you can continue studying the Word of God with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Study from Genesis through Revelation using my <clears throat> excuse me, audio Bible messages at thebibleversebyverse.com. And please remember I'm not under <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not underwritten by a large church or denomination. This has been a faith ministry for over 33 years, 34 years now. So if you want to be a part of this ministry and help me get out God's word, let's stand shoulder to shoulder and proclaim God's word together. You can do that by praying for me, praying for God's word. When you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, click the donate button at the top of the front page and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, so long.